Hey guys, Nicole Cooper here. How are you guys? So I am out walking slash running with a goal to do four miles this morning. And I was listening to my different videos on YouTube, motivational videos and things like that. And wanted to share a quick message with you guys. So if you are there, just tag me and let me know. I will try to keep this super brief because I got to finish my run. So I don't know if this connection is happening out here in no man's land. But uh, let's see. Okay. I think I see some folks coming on. But hello, hello, hello. Y'all see these beautiful Florida skies? Isn't that gorgeous? Gorgeous, gorgeous. So, all right, y'all. I'm going to talk to y'all really quickly about pushing yourself into the extraordinary. Hey, Kevin. Good to see you. Y'all go ahead and share this. Tag some people. And let me just give you a little bit of insight this morning about the ability to go beyond into the extraordinary. Go beyond into the extraordinary. No matter where you are and what you are facing in this season of your life. Guys, listen, many of us, you know, you guys know I love to talk about who you're born to be and who your Time, destiny is. 16 and minutes, what it is. 48 oh, yeah, I hear my Distance, one mile, okay, pace. Okay, one mile done. I got three more minutes, to go. 47 um, seconds but, per mile. Hey, guys. Pace, hey, Tashika. 16 So, minutes, y'all know I love talking about destiny. Per mile. Right? I love talking about assignment, who we are who we were placed on this earth to be and the ability to operate in that place. But today I want to talk to you about the ability to push yourself um, beyond what limits you think you have. As I was out here running today, um, as a matter of fact, I started running a couple of days ago because uh, y'all know how I went through this little procedure. Hey, Jaleesa. And I couldn't work out. My doctor told me I couldn't work out for the past couple of months because of heart potential issues, all this other stuff. So I haven't been able to work out. Gained 20 pounds, y'all. I have gained 20 pounds in this process and I am the heaviest I have ever been in my life, right? And I told my husband at one point in time, I saw myself gaining a pound a day. It was crazy. I would get on a scale and it would say 175. Then the next day I get on it say 176. Next day I get on it say 177. I was like, oh my God, what is happening to my body? Well, there's a whole other medical thing going on behind there. But once I got the procedure done, I asked the doctor, how soon can I get back on my feet? How soon can I work out? And she said, just, you know, wing your way into it. So I came out on Saturday or Monday with the kids. They didn't have school. And the kids were on their bikes and I was walking. It was my first day back. And my son is just learning how to ride his bike. And so I told the kids, I said, y'all go as fast as you can. Mommy is gonna try to keep up with you. So I started jogging and I was trying to encourage my son to keep pedaling. And so, in, in the attempt to encourage him, I found myself running further than I thought I could because I'm trying to help him out and not paying attention to my ability to run. So we started testing ourselves every other block. I'm a, I'm a run the block, y'all go as fast as you can on your bikes. And we started doing this and I started realizing like, yo, my body feel good. I don't feel like I'm about to pass out. I'm not overexerted. And meanwhile, I've been eating really good, drinking nothing but water and eating a lot of veggies. But I realized that in my mind, I thought there was a cap to what can be done versus the ability for what my body can do. And I said to myself, how much, how much can you really push yourself? So this morning, I had a goal to start running. But I wanted to tell you guys, you know, it's time to take the limits off and push yourself beyond the extraordinary because... Most of us are functioning from a, a, a false deception of capacity. We think that we can only do so much, go so far, accomplish so high, because in our minds, we created this limitation. And we told ourselves that I can only go so far, or I can only accomplish so much, or I can only earn so much, I can only do so much, I can only create so much. We start putting all these limitations on ourselves. And the reality is, is that it's not about your physical human capacity all right let me tell you what it's about it's about god's ability to work supernaturally in you 
so that you can begin to operate from a place of his cup that he's giving you and not your cup of what your human limitations well is only familiar with you know what I've discovered guys even about life um, a lot of times I'm talking to family and friends from home and every time I talk to people about how we grew up and what we experienced in our childhood sometimes I have to reflect like God I remember having a dream and a vision of what I wanted in life but in between there were so many hang-ups that I never thought you know, as uh, eventually it became limiting beliefs that started being created that made me feel like I could never accomplish those visions because of my human limitations, me messing up, me going wayward, me, you know, not wanting to be committed enough to a process. But what I've seen over the years, guys, is that it's not about your human limitations. It's about God's supernatural abilities to work through you so that you can go from ordinary into extraordinary but let me tell you how you tap into that because we all know that God wants to bless us and do all the stuff for us but why is it that some people are seem to be living this amazing God blessed life while other people seem to be suffering and I'm not trying to be philosophical I don't want to go too deep on this topic but let me tell you something about what I've discovered about your ability to tap into God's supernatural power so you can go from ordinary to extraordinary. The ability to go from ordinary to extraordinary rules and reigns within your ability to move despite how you feel. It's in your ability to seek guidance no matter how discouraged you are. It's in your ability to sing praises and begin to speak life no matter how devastating your circumstances are. So what does that mean? That means that there are times where you don't feel like getting up off the couch and going for a walk. There are times when you rather watch TV instead of put a little extra effort into developing that skill set. There are times when you should be on the phone working your business when you don't feel like talking to nobody. There are times when your kids need your attention even though you don't feel like being bothered with your children. There are times when your spouse wants to sit down and talk when you don't feel like being bothered. There are times when you should you know go the extra mile when you don't physically feel like it there are times when you want to speak discouragement you want to be frustrated you want to talk, give up and you feel like letting the ball drop and just letting it all go but you have to hold on to that last little bit and begin to speak life over that situation you know I had a situation happen a couple days ago where I was really upset and frustrated and I was like God you gonna have to help me because I'm frustrated and I was fussing and you know God if you don't do this this gonna happen if you don't do that I was just really trying to tell God how I wanted to run the show and he was like that ain't how this gonna work why don't you praise me and speak life over that situation and begin to exalt that situation and begin to declare that I'm going to work through that situation and I'm going to be begin to recreate that situation and it's gonna be victorious not how you feel right now not how you fed up not not how you frustrated, not how you want to give up, not how you want to let go. I want you to begin to praise me in spite of how you feel. And so the minute I began to do that, guys, doors began to be open, shackles began to come off. You know, you began to see glimpses of miracles beginning to happen in your life. You know, doors, doors continuously opening, people coming across your paths, just, just sharing something with you that you're like, this got to be God. See, a lot of us want to just pray and be like, God, you got to fix it. But God is like, no, I've equipped you with what you need to do what you have right where you are for it to be fixed if you're willing to operate in what I tell you to do, which is to get up. It reminds me of a scripture of a man who was crippled. This man was crippled. He had been crippled for, I don't know, I don't know how many years it was. I don't remember the scripture, but this man, I think it was like seven years, there was this pool where people would go into this pool and they would dump themselves in this pool for healing and restoration and all this stuff. And this man, he was dealing with ailments, physical ailments or whatever. And he would sit outside of the pool and beg people to pick him up and put him in the pool to heal him. So Jesus was going by the pool, and I may be jacking the story up, but hey, I'm summarizing it, Cliff Notes version. But Jesus came by the pool, right? And the guy, the, the sick guy was standing there, oh, Jesus, can you help me pick me up and put me in the pool, right? And Jesus looked at him and he said, do you want to be made whole? And the man said, yes, I want to be made whole. Please make me whole. And Jesus said, then pick up your bed and walk. And that man picked up his bed and walked. 
And surely enough, he didn't need nobody to pick him up. He didn't need Jesus to touch him and pass him out. He didn't need to pray for 50,000 nights for God to restore him. God just said, pick up your bed and walk. If you want to be made whole, get up. Do something. Do something with what you have. Act as if you really desire this overcoming. Act as if you really desire to be delivered and move. Get up and pick up your bed and walk. Some of y'all are laying around praying and you asking for God to do stuff, but you laying around in the bed, you're crying, you're wallowing, you're stuffing your mouth with Cheetos, eating that haagen dazs ice cream, you're doing all these different things and you're saying, oh Lord, if you could just change my circumstances, Lord, just please God, fix it, send somebody, bless me, Lord, wipe my debt away, God, make a miracle happen. And God has placed a business in your hand and he's telling you, pick up that phone and call. God is giving you a personal trainer like Felicia Starks and they said, show up to go to training, pay her for your meal plan, show up to begin to work out. God has placed financial resources in your life like Roger Silvera to teach you to get your money right. And God's saying, pick up the phone, go to that workshop, start working on your finances, stop blowing your money, eating out, stop spending money that you don't have, start paying attention and watch your budget, start putting yourself in a position where you cut back, cut off that cable, reduce that cell phone, let go of AT&T, go get you Metro PCS, go get you Cricket, go get you something that's cheaper, stop going out here buying these thousand dollar clothes for these kids, go on to the consignment store, go ahead and start selling some of this stuff, downsize your house, get rid of that big Big old car note. Figure out how you can downsize your insurance. He's telling you, you got all these resources around you. Stop eating out. Create your packed lunch. Stop putting yourself in position, eating all them fried foods. Begin to create vegetables. Make more salads. Create your own dressing. God is telling you, pick up your bed and walk. Some of y'all are sitting around here waiting and your life is passing you by. He said, the day is going to come when you're laying on your My husband's calling. And the ghost. All right, here we go. Came back on. But Les Brown said, your, your ghost from your past, all the things that God wanted to give you in life, is going to begin. The spirits are going to begin to surround you and say, what have you done with me? Why didn't you do this with me? Now I got to go with you into the grave. You see, some of y'all have so many gifts inside of you. Some of y'all have so much that you know you are assigned to do. And you're sitting around and you're waiting for somebody to pick you up and put you in the pool of healing, put you in the pool of restoration, put you in the pool of an overnight deliverance put you in a pool of waking up and being debt free put you in a pool of losing 50 pounds by doing some random cleanse for seven days but you can sit up there and eat fried foods and fast foods every other meal some of y'all want your marriages to be restored but you refuse to pray for your spouses some of y'all want your kids to get their life right but you let them sit there and watch you cuss out everybody else and act a fool some of y'all want your finances to be in order but you never pay attention to what's coming in and what's going out some of y'all want to make more money but you refuse to increase your skill set some of y'all want to be super successful but you refuse to read a book some of y'all want somebody to mentor you but you refuse to take that money that you blow on that beautiful purse that you had to have that was on sale instead of putting it in the pockets of somebody that can say one thing that'll change your life because you invest in them as a coach or a mentor some of y'all want these overnight changes but you don't want to do what it takes to change and that's the difference between those who live a life that look like God has blessed them versus those who look like they're operating underneath a curse let me tell you guys something Spirit of the living God is alive and well. He rule, reigns, and abides in this earth. He's able to be in position to change your circumstances and make a miracle happen. He's able to take nothing, the Bible says, that he'll take the foolish things of this world and conform them to become wise. He has the ability to take somebody who was a murderer, who was somebody who actually would kill his people and, and martyr people who were worshiping God and turn him around to be one of the greatest prophets of the land and write a great amount of the books in the Bible. His name was Paul, who once name was Saul. God can take anything and anybody and turn them circumstances around. But let me tell you why God has a tendency of going after crooks and fools and people who are out here who are hustlers and they might be jailbirds. They might be prostitutes. They might be people that everybody has given up on. The reason why God loves them kind of people is because they don't have no limitations. They'll be fool enough to take the risk. They'll say, if God said I can do it, I'm going to believe that it can be done and I'm not going to live under no hesitation. See, some of y'all too educated. Some of y'all too caught up in your human abilities and your human knowledge some of y'all trying to make things logical let me tell y'all about god god is not a logical god god is a god that it don't make no sense god is a god where 
the things that he shows us that can be done, nobody can explain. He wouldn't be God if it made sense. He wouldn't be God if he was able to, 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 to allow you to be blessed by a man the same way that you could be blessed by God. It's not going to happen. You see, the Bible tells us that the natural man does not understand the things of God because there's no spirit living inside of him. But you see, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, you understand that that Holy Spirit is able to connect with the supernatural being that is able to communicate things that is not logical in our human mind, but God allows us to be able to understand it because the spirit is able to translate it. See, some of y'all need a translator in your life. God is giving you every signal. He's sending you every sign. He's sending you every resource, but you can't pick it up. Why? Because you have uh, muted the voice of the Holy Spirit. You told God you don't need him. You got this. You can figure it out. You told God that you read a book and the book told you what you can do. You told God that I'm just going to worship the universe like all these big time superstar celebrities and we're going to figure this thing out. And you, you said, I'm going to go on to a Tony Robbins conference and Tony Robbins going to tell me how to make it work. But see what happened is you've muted the voice of the Holy Spirit. You told the Holy Spirit, take a back seat, go on, hop out my car because I'm going to be in control of how this bad boy ride. And God say, see, the natural man can't understand the things of God because it's foolishness to him. But it takes the spirit of the living God to be able to translate what it is that I'm trying to teach you and show you and tell you and give you. But until you honor and accept and receive the Holy Spirit, that is, is, is my interpreter that is able to translate my message to you, you will continue to live your life being overwhelmed, confused, and dis in a state of despair, listening to every song, every motivational video, reading every self-help book, going to every conference and seeking out every mentor, throwing all your money at these things that God created. See, if you really want to live an extraordinary life, if you really want to live a supernatural life, you're going to understand, number one, I need to receive the Spirit of God because I need a translator to be able to communicate to me what it is that God is calling me to do, assigned me to do, position me to do, grant to me the gift to do and giving me the power to do. And then you'll begin to hear his voice. The second thing is you're gonna have to learn, take up your doggone bed and walk. See, some of y'all are lazy. Some of y'all wanna sit back and wait on somebody. And see, when you wait on somebody else to save you, what happens is you give your power away. You see, all of us have the ability to rise up and do. I've met people who are blind, but they show up at conferences. I've met people who are paraplegics that can barely push themselves in their mechanical wheelchair, that literally have pipes coming out their throat, but they never missed a live event. I met people who had to type with their mouth that was getting on the internet trying to figure out how to grow and build a business and develop a skill set. I've met people who are deaf that would tell me, Nicole, I watch every single one of your videos. Can you please slow down so that I can be able to understand because I have to read your lips and I want to be able to hear what it is that you're saying. And they'll tell me that they watch my videos over and over and over again trying to read my lips because they can't hear my words. And so they asked me to find a way to be able to interpret for them through, through transcription. So y'all gonna start seeing, I'm spending my money, hire the transcriptionist out of Africa to make sure that he converts every video that I do so that my deaf friends that have inboxed me and told me how much these videos helped them, but it took 20 attempts to get the full message, will be able to receive the message because I wanna help that person that has picked up their bed and walk and made a decision to transform their lives. See guys, it's time for you to push yourself. It's time for you to go beyond the limits of what it is that you thought you can do. It's time for you to stop operating in the ordinary and operate in the extraordinary but it all starts with that Holy Spirit. It all starts with a man by the name of Jesus. You see, some of us don't want to hear nothing about that God stuff. See, that God stuff is spooky and it's crazy and it don't really exist because if God exists, we wouldn't be living in a world that is the way that it is. And if God exists, then Trump wouldn't be in office. And if God exists, there wouldn't be no poor people. And if God exists, people wouldn't die. And if God exists, this wouldn't happen and that wouldn't happen. Let me tell y'all something else about this whole, if God exists, this wouldn't happen. You see, if you read the word of God, you would understand that this ain't your home. You would understand that there's a divine assignment, that you are not a human being having a spiritual experience, but you're a spirit being having a human experience placed on this earth, be called, conquered, predestined to do something, to continue to allow other people's spirits and souls to encounter a man, uh, uh, or not a man, a being that has such a supernatural calling on our lives that does not, he's not over this earth. You see, there is a heaven, there is a hell and there's an opportunity for your spirit to rule reign and abide and one of them your souls and where we are here on this earth is not our home we're here on assignment because this is a battlefield people this is where we go to war this is where we conquer this is where we de de declare and stake our ground with our flag and we begin to declare who we are we claim our territory we're not put on this earth to get comfortable we're not put on this earth to build your palace and get your many cars and have your clothes your your million dollar uh wardrobe sitting up in your closet see those are side those are side 
side effects. Those are, those, are, those are side benefits. You see, those things are like the sauce to your chicken nuggets. Those things are like the, the salad to your meal. That is not the meal. That is not the main event. That is not the, the thing that you were placed on this earth to do. So yeah, they're going to be war because the Bible tells us that the, this we the weapons of our warfare are not physical. They're, they're, they're spiritual. We're in a spiritual battle. So while y'all sitting around here waiting for God to do something, he's saying, I done equipped you. You ain't got up yet. You ain't used none of the armor that I gave you. You ain't put yourself in position yet to begin to speak life into that scenario to turn your circumstances around. You see that book over there that I gave you? You have yet to crack it open, but you called every friend in your phone trying to ask them to tell you what you should do. You put yourself in position where you going out to the psychics and you asking them what does your future look like? The Bible tells you in Jeremiah 29 11 I know the plans that I have for you plans to give you a future and a hope and not of evil you see the word of God tells you what he has for you but that bookman sitting over there catching dust why because that thing is old you don't understand it you can't seem to figure out what he's trying to tell you but the reality is God says listen I've given you every resource on this earth you see that smartphone you got in your hand where you pick up and you go to social media 256 times a day you see when you are trying to see what everybody else is doing on Instagram and you snapping on snapchat what you eating and you putting yourself in position where you show your outfit of the day see that same smartphone you got on your hand has this app called you version and that you version is break down the Bible in over a hundred different ways they make it as plain as English they even got a doggone Ebonics version of, the, of that Bible and the, and the word God says if you really want to know this word you will put a little extra effort in you will pick up your bed and walk and say God I need to know what you're saying to me I need to understand what you're saying to me I need to know where it is that you want me to go what it is that you want me to do where it is that you want to take me I'm willing I'm open I'm available I understand that you created me I know that your Bible tell, tells me in Psalms 139 that I am fearfully and wonderfully made, that you carefully crafted me in my mother's womb. See, God, I want to understand that. Your word says, don't worry about where you're going to eat or how you're going to sleep, that if I could feed the ravens, I can make sure that you're taken care of. See, the Bible tells you that he will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. But some of y'all so caught up in that hustle life. Some of y'all want to sit around here and talk about I'm a hustler and you're working five jobs. You're neglecting your marriage. You're neglecting your kids. You're still tired. You're miserable. You're broke. You're depressed. The bills keep coming. You can never make enough money. And God is telling you, if you would just sit down and hear my word and listen to my commands, I'll show you how to wipe out all of them jobs. And I'll show you what you can do to increase your skill set and have a resource that you already have in your hand and turn that thing around and give you more than enough. You see, God wants to give you more exceedingly abundantly above anything that you could ask or think. But some of us think that that Bible thing is so old. You know, don't nobody want to talk about that whole Shakespearean. We, we don't understand that Shakespearean stuff. You know, the preachers, they driving Cadillacs. They just want my money. Or the churches, they ain't affected. I don't want to be in church for four or five hours a day. Let me tell y'all something about church. Church is not a building. You are the church. Everything that you do on a day-to-day -day basis is a representation and an example to somebody. And until you understand that it's not about a building, but the spirit of God that possesses inside of you is allowing you to be the church, then you'll realize that who I am and what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is sometimes the only Jesus that people are going to see. So while I'm sitting back criticizing all these pastors and ministers and all the people in the choir who don't want to sing the right song, who, who I got my own opinion about God is saying but what are you doing people are watching you you my vessel you the church on your job but on your job you still in stuff you still in time because you go to lunch supposed to be gone for an hour you come back in an hour and a half you show up late every day you have no integrity no accountability you don't put yourself in position for people to look at you and say there's something different about you instead they look at you sometimes and say you just like everybody else and God is saying see you my representation what are you doing as a church what are you doing to show people who I am what are you doing to allow yourself to be used to impact other people's lives while you sitting here cross criticizing everybody else talking about what they can and cannot do you're missing out on the opportunity for you to be the only Jesus that some people see see some of y'all need to understand it ain't about somebody coming to do something for you it ain't about a preacher being able to transfer a message that's just a gift that's a byproduct them preachers don't have to sit up there every single Sunday and package up a message and give it to you the Bible tells you you got to study to show yourself approved you crack open that word and you learn it for yourself you got to put yourself in position when 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 Paul went to um i can't remember where he was in corinthians uh, he was somewhere in the bible he went to visit these people and he started talking about who jesus was the people it was an x i remember reading that in x and the people paul is this whole minister he going from from you know city to city he preaching the word of god and these people are hearing about him so they go see him speak and they're like oh that man was such a good speaker but what did they say they say let's read this word to confirm what he just told us because we can't just take paul word for it we need to know the god that paul is talking about see it's time for y'all to get to know who god is for yourself stop living through your grandmama's prayers it's beautiful 
beautiful we got a praying grandmother but how many of you gonna be that grandmother praying for your grandbabies see some of y'all haven't been praying for your kids some of y'all haven't been praying over your household some of y'all haven't been praying over your marriage some of y'all haven't been praying over your family why you sick and tired of your brothers and sisters asking you for money how many of you are praying for them to have a breakthrough why you sitting around pissed off at your mama for something she did when you was 15 years old and you still bitter you still angry you still got this contempt against her against her you how many of you prayed for a release of your mama some of y'all pissed off at your daddy some of y'all felt like my daddy never did this my daddy never did that how many of y'all prayed for what your daddy went through you see what you got to understand guys is heaven is this earth is not our home your real father is the heavenly father he gives you physical beings to be escorts to guide you along the way sometimes some do their job sometimes some don't but here's not your role to sit up here and live your life pissed off at a person when God is saying but I'm the one in control I'm the one here to guide you I'm the one here to show you what it is that you're called to do see it's time for us to take responsibility we want to pray we want to believe that God is just a loving God. Let me tell y'all something about Jesus. Jesus ain't no punk. Jesus ain't going to be manipulated. Jesus ain't going to sit around here and let y'all use the excuse that God don't must don't want to bless you. God is saying, listen, I told you, if whatever you ask in my name, it shall be given. Whatever you seek in my name, you shall find. Whatever door you knock on, it shall be open. But some of y'all not knocking. Some of y'all not asking. Some of y'all not seeking. So listen, the Bible will also tell you that you're going to get to heaven. Some of y'all going to not get to heaven. But when judgment day comes, some of y'all gonna be like, Jesus, don't you know me? Like I wore the cross around my neck. I used to talk about you. I received you when I was five years old. And Jesus gonna say, depart from me, fool. I never knew you. See, the reality is Jesus ain't no punk. Some of y'all sitting around here looking at this chaotic world. Y'all trying to figure out, how do I make my way in this world? Why is it that this not happening? Why isn't that that not happening? Let me tell y'all why it's not happening. Because there's no spiritual or moral compass that is happening on this earth today because we have quit. You see, you are the beginning of that change, that shift, that supernatural exaltation to begin to transform where you are and transform what you do I'll never forget when Bishop Long that was my daddy my spiritual father for many years y'all say what y'all want to say about that man I heard God's voice be able to be used in a time where I didn't understand who God was but I'll never forget I was 1998-99 I was in college and I remember a message that he gave he said when you walk in rooms conversations should change when you sit at tables people should automatically begin to feel convicted if they know that they're out of order in the things that they say because the spirit within you is so heavy that people begin to feel a difference, a shift in the atmosphere. You normal. You too, you too complain. My husband is trying to call me wonder where I'm at. All right, it came back. But I'm gonna tell y'all, I don't blend into normal crowds. I don't have big audiences around me. I don't always fit into what everybody else is doing. And sometimes it's a lonely space, but here's what I gotta understand. I'm not here to take sides. I'm not here to blend in. I'm here to take over. I have an assignment. I'm not here to be able to fit in and make everybody happy, to get them to understand who I am, to be apologetic about what I'm called to do, to get them to validate the anointing on my life. I'm not here seeking people's approval. I'm not here waiting for somebody to give me the okay. I'm not here for somebody to tell me I did a good job. I'm not here if they don't like what I said. There are times where I make mistakes. There's times where people get pissed off at me. The same people that say, oh, Nicole, you're so amazing. They turn around and get pissed off and then they talk bad about you. And then you see them disappearing out of your life because you done said something that they didn't like. See, the reality is I'm not here to be a people pleaser. You see, the word of God tells you that you don't work heartily unto man. God said you work heartily unto the Lord, that then it'll bless people through man. I'm not here to work for y'all. I'm not here to do this stuff for y'all. I'm not here to do this you know because I want you to like me I'm here to do it because it's an assignment and because I'm ordered to it's divine order it's divine strategic alignment of a time and a season in our lives where we got social media where we can use this as an opportunity I can, I can easily use this as an opportunity to gloat I can use it as an opportunity to brag I can use it as an opportunity to say look at me and what I've done or I can say Lord what is it that you want to say today and how do you want to use me today and how can you leverage me today see it don't mean that I'm I'm some high and mighty person it just means that God says, are you available? I'm looking for somebody who's available. See, it's like knocking on the door, right? If y'all remember back in the story of Moses, back in Exodus, as in, in Exodus, when Moses, um, there's something that happened with Moses and he was taking the people out when he was getting ready to take the people out of Egypt into the Israelites. And there was a spirit that was released that um, the, the, the king of Egypt, whatever his name is, y'all remember the prince of Egypt, um, he wanted to kill 
all the all the little boys in the land. I think it was Herod. He wanted to kill all the little boys in the land. And so the spirit came at night. But the word got around to those who were connected to the kingdom. Listen to this. Those who were connected to the kingdom got the word that Herod was going to send out a spirit that was designed to kill every son, every boy that was in the land. And the, the word of God got out to the people who were listening because they was connected to the spirit. And they found out. The Bible said, um, the, uh, God, they didn't have a Bible at the time, but they heard that God said, put a cross in blood over your door seal and your home will be unscathed. And guess what? Those who put that cross, the blood of Jesus, over their door, when that little demon came through to take out all the, the boys, guess what? There, it wasn't touched. I don't think Herod did it because Herod's son died too. It was just some massive wipeout that took place. Um, a demonic spirit that took out all these, all these boys. But see, those who were connected to the kingdom were able to get the message and they were able to protect their households guys we got to protect our household you know it's not about you being perfect it ain't about you figuring your life all out it ain't about you having it all together it ain't about you you know trying to say that you different than everybody else listen god tells you in the word of god that he is no respecter of persons i don't care who anybody is god is, does not have favoritism he's looking for people that are available that's it that's it are you an available vessel that's why he'll go to the homeless and he'll go to the prostitutes he'll go to the pimps he'll go to the murderers because they ain't got nothing to lose they're like all right jesus you want me to roll with you? I got you. What you want me to do, Jesus? Whatever you want to do, I'm down. You see, some of y'all too educated. Some of y'all too smart. Some of y'all got too much together. Some of y'all trying to figure life out on your own. And that little Jesus thing, oh, uh, don't nobody need that. Don't nobody need that in this day and age. It's a new millennium. This 2017. I got this thing figured out. Let me go on over here to this to this Lisa Nichols event. Let me get to the Tony Robbins event. Let me read this book. Let me go on to the self-help section in Barnes and Nobles. And we're going to figure out the universe. And I'm just going to say some affirmations and confirmations. And my life is going to change. And ain't nothing changing. Let me tell y'all, it ain't about no affirmations and confirmations. It's about the spirit of the living God living within you. And you giving him permission to to be able to communicate so you can be able to receive. If you want to go from ordinary to extraordinary, if you want to start stop living your life in the misery of the natural and begin to encounter the supernatural, you got to pick up your bed and walk. You got to pick up that word and read. You got to get your behind to out to, to somebody's church just so that you can get a glimpse of something. So if you don't know what to pray, what to say, what to seek, what to, to search for, Go somewhere and go figure out, you know, hear what somebody else is praying and then, then open up your eye and take notes and say that prayer too. And if you really want to know how to pray, well, going into, I think it's Matthew 6 or Matthew 13, where God say, look, you want to know what to pray? I already wrote prayers for you. Come on into Matthew, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, you, it's in the word. It's in the word. Go open up a Proverbs. Go read what the Bible says about proverbs you know some of us are lazy we don't want to work but you know what the bible say about a lazy man the bible say a lazy man won't eat a little folding of the hands he's going to be hungry you see we sitting around here y'all we live in this chaotic life watching reality shows and praising all these celebrities and looking at the kardashians and thinking maybe i should go get a sex tape or something and then i'll be a superstar or maybe i should put myself out there and maybe i'm gonna build my brand and maybe i'm gonna you know, take a thousand dollar photo shoot with some, well, I don't know, y'all name your labels that you like. Maybe if I show my Celine purse or maybe if I go buy this car and people check that out, maybe that's going to make me rich. Or maybe it's going to make me successful or maybe it's going to make me acceptable or whatever the heck, whatever, whatever things we tell ourselves. I used to tell myself that too, you know, but God says, no, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. You see guys, it ain't about always working harder, right? It ain't always about doing more. It ain't always about striving. It ain't always about about getting more education it ain't always about putting yourself out there where you gotta physically figure it out sometimes you just gotta sit down and seek and put yourself in position and pray and cut off the phone and close the doors and stop asking everybody else and say God what is it that you want to do with my life where is it that you want to take me because let me tell y'all something as crazy as it feels to step into that territory, to seek the face of God, somebody that we can't see, that we don't understand, that, you know, he probably, you know what it feels like to hear from the voice of the Lord. I remember people used to say that. I'm like, what you talking about? You hear, you heard from God. Like, how you hear from God? Like, what's that? Right? I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't know what that stuff meant. But I remember having unctions in my spirit 
where I'm driving and guy, I hear this little slight little voice say, don't go straight, turn left. And I remember I started listening to the little still small voice and say, I don't know what's left, but I'm going to turn left. And then when I turn left, I would hear, go right. And I'd be like, okay, you say go right. I don't know what's up with that, but I'm going to go right. And then they say, pull up right here in this place. And then you pull up and you get in that place and you had this encounter with somebody. And then you realize, oh. That was a setup I got. All right, next time I hear that unction again, I'ma listen. And what happens, guys, is the more you start listening, the more you start paying attention, the more you start, the voice starts getting clearer and the voice starts getting louder and the revelations start becoming clear. The confidence starts being boosted. The submission starts growing stronger. The revelations start being revealed more often. And the next thing you know, you realize this is not about religion. It's about a relationship. This is about a, a divine encounter of understanding, knowing that he loves me just as much as he loves anybody else. That just because this person that went to biblical school and seminary school and they got all these, these whatever the heck they give them for all the stuff they do to say I'm holy, God loves you just as much. He can give you just as much. He can do just as much. He can speak to you just as much. I ain't got to seek my pastor to hear God's voice. It's good to have a pastor as an advisor. But God says you got to know me for yourself. You have to know me for yourself, but you got to seek me. God ain't going to come get you. He ain't going to force you. He ain't going to make you do it. He ain't going to beg you to do it. He's going to say, I'm here. If you want me, I'm here. But you got to ask. You got to seek. You got to knock. You got to pick up your bed and walk. That, my friends, is how you go from ordinary to extraordinary. That, my friends, is how you go from natural to the supernatural. So I got three more miles to run. I done gave y'all an earful, but I gotta go. See you later, y'all. Time to get my run on. Bye.